Hey, sports card fans, it's John Wade Boggs fan. Hope you're all doing well. Over the last three years, I have evolved in terms of my vintage baseball card collection. When I first started off, my goal or mindset was to obtain collector grade copies of Hall of Famers. Now, if you're not familiar with that term collector grade, that means that if a card is from the 1970s, the, the collector grade would be a PSA 7. If a card is from the 1960s, it would be a PSA 6 and so on. So I wanted to go after those collector grade copies. Now, I first started off going after 1978 and 79 Topps cards. Now, for those years, it was fairly easy for me to actually pick up PSA 8 and sometimes PSA 9 copies for not a whole lot of money. Now, some of the big rookie cards for those years, I did drop down a grade or two just for budgetary purposes. But as I started going back and looking at older years, I realized that a card from 1974, 72, maybe even 1975 in a PSA 7, let alone cards from the 60s in a PSA 6, depending on the player, uh, those card prices could be uh, pretty high. And so I came upon a crossroad. I had to make a decision. Did I want to focus on quality or quantity? If I wanted to focus on quality, I knew I wasn't going to be able to build my collection um, quickly. That I'd have to save up some more money to get particular cards in that collector grade. So it would be a slow process, really slow process of building my collection. If I wanted to go quantity, then I knew I'd have to drop down and look at lower graded cards for budgetary purposes so I could afford to buy more cards. Well, I decided to go the route of quantity. I wanted to, to build my collection sort of as fast as possible. I know it's a marathon, not a sprint. Uh, so I went from looking at collector grade copies to, okay, let me look at one grade lower. So I started to look at, say, 1970s cards in PSA 6s. And for a while, that worked. I was able to pick up maybe some lower grade or lower tier Hall of Famers. Uh, occasionally, I'd be able to save up a little money uh, and maybe pick up, say, a Hank Aaron card or another higher tier Hall of Famer. But... Again, as I started looking back into the 60s, maybe even some of those PSA 5 copies were starting to get up there. Now, again, we're, we're not talking hundreds and hundreds of dollars, uh, but for someone with a somewhat limited budget that now I'm, I want to focus on quantity, they were still a little bit more than, say, I wanted to pay for a particular card. So fast forward to probably maybe a year and a half ago, I started focusing less on the number grade and more on the general eye appeal of the card and what I could get to sort of um, maximize my budget while still getting a card uh, that I find visually appealing for my collection. And I sort of hit this sweet spot of PSA 4 copies. And I, I think I've done quite well over the last, and again, I, I think it maybe it's the last year and a half or so, um, of finding PSA 4 copies, uh, even in cards you know, from the, the 60s. And I have uh, one example here that I'm going to show from uh, the early 70s in a PSA 4 that one, again, to me is a great looking card, and two, saved me a lot of money that I could then use to buy more cards. So what I'm going to do here, I, I, I picked out 16 cards that are all PSA 4s and I'm going to show them to you and then I'm going to let you know what the current BCP price is, the average price uh, for a PSA 4 copy and what the current average VCP price is for the quote-unquote collector grade. 
and at the end show you how much in theory I would have saved if I had gone the quality route versus the quantity route and the numbers are, are pretty impressive in, in my opinion on how much I have saved which would basically go into buying additional cards for my collection. So let's turn the camera around and uh, show off these 16 cards of my favorite PSA grade now, uh, PSA 4. All right, the first card I have to show off here is one of my uh, earlier PSA 4 uh, pickups, and this is the 1955 Bowman Hank Aaron. Now, being a 1955 card, you know, this is just one step below the collector grade, uh, but I just uh, love the overall eye appeal of this card. I remember uh, seeing a PSA 5 copy uh, that, you know, had, you know, basically the same type of centering, but was more expensive than this PSA 4. So really love the overall centering, eye appeal, the color, registration, all that good stuff. Uh, sacrificed on some of the corners there, but overall I think that's a great looking 55 Bowman card of Hank Aaron. And here's the back of the card quickly. Nice and clean. And all right, so in a PSA 4, the current average VCP price is $338. For a collector grade PSA 5 copy, the current average VCP price is $582. So that represents a potential savings of $244 if I had decided to go with a collector grade copy versus this PSA 4 copy. All right, the next card is another Hank Aaron, and this is his 1958 Topps card, a white name variation. Again, just uh, love the, the centering, uh, that solid green background. Um, I don't know, just it, it's gorgeous looking card. I Granted, you know, if you're not looking for perfection, this is a great looking card and it's a PSA 4. Again, it's a 1950s card, so it is just one step below the collector grade, but the current average VCP price of this PSA 4 is $250. For a PSA 5, the current average VCP price is $366. So that represents a savings of $116. So already with these two Hank Aaron cards, uh, there's some significant savings starting to build up here. All right, uh, now we're gonna get into some 60s cards. So these represents, uh, represent uh, uh, two grades below a collector grade of PSA 6. All right, the first one here is the 1960 Tops Frank Robinson. Again, great centering. Registration, colors, really love this card. You know, again, from, from my collection in terms of eye appeal, um, I really like this card. I, I, you know, PSA 5 or 6 copy, yeah, maybe slightly better centering. Maybe the corners would be a little bit nicer. Um, but, again, nice clean back. I, I don't see anything really wrong with this. Again, if you're not looking for that high quality card, uh, this represents a great eye appeal. And so for a PSA 4 copy of this 60 tops Frank Robinson, the current average VCP price is $52. In a PSA 6 copy, the average VCP price is $114. So it represents a $62 savings that I could, in theory, use to buy additional cards. All right, the next one here starts a, a group of uh, a few 1961 Topps cards. The first one is the Whitey Ford. Again, just look at that card. I mean, it is, again, if you're, if you're not particular on the corners, uh, that is solid centering right there. Uh, you don't see many print marks or ink, uh, uh, you know, runs or anything like that. Uh, roller marks. 
Um, sometimes with these 60 ones down at that, those color borders, you do see, you know, a couple little, you know, fish eyes and things like that, but little print marks. But all in all, this has great eye appeal. And there is the back. Again, nice and clean. Great looking copy of that Whitey Ford card. And in this uh, PSA 4, it's not worth a whole lot. PSA 4, the average VCP price is 26 bucks. In a PSA 6, again, you're not talking a whole lot. It's it's 50 bucks. The average VCP price in a PSA 6. So again, could I have spent around 60 bucks to get a PSA 6 copy? Again, that's not breaking the bank. Uh, but overall, it represents a $24 savings. And I've purchased some vintage cards for around that $24. So that savings represents maybe one additional card that I'd be able to add to my collection. All right, the other 61 tops card here is the Yogi Berra. Again, great centering. Um, maybe down in the, the, the color, you know, areas down there with his name and, and, the, and the team, you can see maybe a little bit of some, some black ink, but overall, just a, again, a great looking card. In a PSA 4, two grades below a collector grade. Nice back as well. You know, I, I, I'd, I'd buy this card all day long. And the current VCP price in this PSA 4 for the 61 Barra is $63. In a PSA 6, the average VCP price is $116. Again, it, it's not a huge difference, but again, sp spending over $100 uh, for me right now on a PSA graded vintage card uh, means that I have to, you know, make a little bit of uh, sacrifices and maybe hold off on some other purchases. So this $53 in quote unquote savings, um, you know, $53, that could be, you know, one, one and a half <laughs> uh, cards extra that I could add to my collection. All right, moving on to 1962. I have a couple uh, 62 copies here. Uh, the first one is the Ernie Banks. Again, nice looking card, maybe a little issue there on the, the, the right edge and in the corners, but check out that crisp image of Ernie Banks. Again, these 62s are really tough uh, with that wood border, but all in all, that's a great looking card for PSA 4. The other thing that I started look start looking for as well, in addition to the PSA 4, is I've been trying to eye some of the newer slabs. Uh, I did a video recently about, you know, PSA being either going back to, you know, grading a card properly or just being tougher compared to uh, recent standards. Uh, they seem to be uh, really hard on, uh, on vintage cards in terms of the assigned grade. So I can find PSA 4s if I know it's in a, a newer label. Um, I can maybe find some cards that maybe in the past would have been graded, uh, in this case, maybe a 5 or even a, a 6, and get away with only paying uh, a PSA 4 value. You know, maybe a, a high end of a PSA 4 uh, because of the great eye appeal. But here is the back. Another nice back. And so in a PSA 4, the current VCP price for this 52 banks is $50. In a PSA 6, it's 102. So again, another $52 savings. That combined with the Barra here, maybe that would be, you know, three more cards uh, that I could have in my collection. So the other 62 tops is this Hank Aaron. Again, another really nice copy there. Just, I don't know, it, 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 to me, this card has great eye appeal. It's not perfect. Again, I'm not looking for the high quality grade, you know, fresh from a pack type uh, condition, but one that I can look at and I can enjoy and like the overall look of it. That certainly fits the bill here, here, bill here <laughs> for this PSA 4. Again, nice clean back. 
So for this 52 Aaron in a PSA 4, the average, the current average VCP price is $132. If this were a PSA 6, it would be $336. So the savings there is $204. That represents a significant savings that again, I can put toward more vintage cards for my collection. All right, on to a 1963 Topps card. This is the Power Plus featuring two great Hall of Famers, Ernie Banks and Hank Aaron in a PSA 4. You know, these, these 63s with that uh, bottom, you know, color, the bottom border there, uh, very sensitive to chipping. You know, this one does have a crease in it, but it, it still retains a lot of the color of the border. And the centering's great. Great images, you know, the, the, the colors just pop on this card. Here is the back. Yeah, sacrificed a little bit on the back, a little bit off center, but all in all, generally a clean back. And in a PSA 4, this 63 Tops Power Plus goes for $75. If this was a PSA 6, it would be $129. Again, could I afford to spend like $130 for this card? You know, I could, but the savings of $54 uh, between the two um, conditions, the, 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 you know, the four to the six, means that I could spend that $54 on another card. All right, here's another uh, big savings. The 64 tops... Pete Rose, uh, probably one of my favorite Pete Rose cards. Uh, again, big hobby favorite, especially over his rookie card. Look at the centering on that. Um, there are some maybe a little bit of issues. There's a little bit of uh, discoloring there on that border, but I don't look at that border. I mean, that's where my focus is. And the overall centering, to me, this is a great copy. Uh, I'm not worried about those two corners. Again, quality is not a high prior priority for me now it's the the, the quantity um, and there's the back again nice nice clean back nice you know standard 64 tops back in this PSA 4 uh, this card is currently going for two hundred and fifty three dollars if this was a PSA 6 I'd have to spend right now on average five hundred and seventy two dollars so that represents a three hundred and nineteen dollar difference which is the biggest um, difference between uh, the psa4 grade and the collector grade of the ones i've shown off so far so that three hundred and nineteen dollars can go a long way in adding more cards to my collection all right keeping this going here 1965 tops Steve Carlton rookie card. I've talked about this um, at the last uh, Chicago, I think it was the Chicago National, maybe it was Atlantic City. They're starting to run together. Uh, but uh, the same dealer had a PSA 4 and a PSA 5 copy. I put the two side by side, and honestly, I, I couldn't tell the difference between the two. So why would I spend more money? on a PSA 5 copy when I can pick up this PSA 4 and have just as nice of a card in terms of how I see the eye appeal of this. Here's the back, nice back as well. So for this PSA 4 Carlton rookie card, $137 in a PSA 4. In a PSA 6, the price jumps to $252. So that's a savings of $115. That could be two or three additional cards right there. The next card is one that, again, for, for whatever reason, I had in my mind I wanted to get in a PSA 5. I figured it wouldn't cost me too much to get a PSA 5 copy of this, one grade lower than a collector grade. But I just couldn't find one that, that 
met my eye appeal test. Uh, they were all off center or they wanted, you know, a really high price for the five. And so I settled on this PSA four. It's the 66 tops Jim Palmer rookie card. And, you know, I, again, I didn't spend a whole lot of money on it because it is a PSA four. But honestly, when I compared it to a lot of the PSA fives that were, um, on eBay at the time, and I looked for this card for a few months and just wasn't happy with the PSA 5s. And so by getting this PSA 4, currently the average price of this Palmer Rookie is $81. In a PSA 6, again, which I, what I, I wasn't going looking at PSA 6s, maybe PSA 5s, but in a PSA 6, the collector grade of this Palmer Rookie is $164. So that's an $83 difference. Almost it's is double the price going from a 4 to a 6. So right there like I said uh, depending on the player, you know, it could be two additional cards for my collection. All right, 1968 tops. I love this Tom Seaver. And Fairly recent pickup. Again, I was looking at some PSA 5s. PSA 5s weren't overly expensive. I had some money sort of set aside that I said, okay, well, I can I can maybe spend a little bit more uh, picking up a PSA 5, but I saw this PSA 4, and I said, I, I, I got to go after it. Um, just everything about it, I, I love. It's, it's not perfect, but for me, I just... I love this PSA 4, and again, it's a, it's a newer slab, so I think maybe they were, you know, a little bit, uh, you know, critical in the grade. Could this have been a 5 uh, a few years ago if it was sent in for grading? Possibly. Here is the back. Again, overall centering is nice. I'm very happy, very, very happy with this PSA 4. Now, the current... BCP price, the average price for a PSA 4 of this 68 Seaver is 56 bucks. In a PSA 6, it's only $117. So we're talking about a $61 savings. Again, a little bit more than double going from a 4 to a 6. But again, that's 61 bucks that I have in my budget that I could spend on other cards. So let me move these uh, away here a little bit. I'm sort of running out of room with the the camera here so let's keep those up there and look at this 1969 tops johnny bench this was another one that i was struggling to find a well-centered copy this is a very popular card of johnny bench his first solo card the rookie cup uh, just the image of bench there it's just a classic vintage card i'm not going to say iconic it's just a classic card of arguably one of the greatest catchers of all time and so when i saw this psa 4 i knew there were issues with the corners but the overall eye appeal to me just just caught my eye and said that yeah i, I really need to to go after this and here is the back another really nice back just overall great looking card and in a PSA 4 right now this bench goes for $119 in a PSA 6 it jumps to $281 so right there is $162 savings that's again for for my budget that is an uh, a not an insignificant uh, amount there all right, another 69 tops, a fairly recent one that I picked up that I've shown off is a 69 tops Frank Robinson. Now again, Frank Robinson cards are not that expensive. Could I have afforded a five? Um, yeah, um, no, no doubt about it. Um, maybe even a PSA six once I tell you the price here. Uh, this one, I decided to include the savings between a four and a six is not that much. But it just goes to show that you can find um, a great looking, in this case, PSA 4, and you don't have to spend the little bit of extra money, and a little bit for me goes a long way. So this PSA 4 currently average price is 23 bucks.
Okay, not a very valuable card, but one that I love to look at and is a great addition to my collection. In a PSA 6, it's only 39 bucks. All right, so I saved $16. And you say, oh, John, you know, what, you know, big deal, big whoop. But as you'll see here when I give you the totals, uh, for these 16 cards, it, it definitely adds up. All right, two more cards to go over here. Uh, a third 1969 tops. And again, a lot of these for the 69, as some of the other years, it comes down to, to centering. I, I, I find a higher grade copy, but it's off center. And, and the reason why it's a higher grade copy is probably because of the corners. And for me, even when I first started off um, with my uh, vintage baseball card collecting, I know I, I knew I wanted well centered cards. That was that was always the big thing for me. Whether I focused on quantity or quality, I wanted a well centered card. And I, I always show this card off because this is one of the first examples where I decided to go for a PSA four. And I'm so glad I did. I, I just I I absolutely love this Tom Seaver card. Um just I don't know the, the the colors just with that white border. There's just something about this card. It's the same image as the '68, uh, but I don't know. There's something about this '69 design and that image of Seaver and the colors. Uh, just just speaks to me, and I love the overall eye appeal of this. Check out that nice bright back. <laughs> and so currently, a PSA four copy of this Tom Seaver. It's only thirty three bucks. Okay, again, I didn't spend an arm and a leg for this PSA 4, but the PSA 6 copy currently goes for, on average, $72. So $39 savings. Again, that's, in the grand scheme of things, that's one more card that I can add to my collection. Now, finally, I haven't done this. I think this is the only time I've done it with a 1970s card going with a PSA 4 copy, but it's from the 1971 set. And we all know, if you know anything about vintage cars, the 1971 set with that black border is so hard to find, one centered and two, where the black border isn't chipped. And just again, it impacts the overall eye appeal of the card, at least for me. So here is the 1971 tops Brooks Robinson. Now, Again, it, it, just, if you take a quick look at this card and, and don't look at the corners, you look at the centering, okay, maybe top to bottom a little bit, but I mean, I again, general eye appeal. Uh, any issues that the corners have, it's not because of, you know, you don't see any of the, any of the cardboard. It, it's, I don't know, this particular copy um, the issues with the corners are so faint that it retains the black border overall in the card. And so when I saw this PSA 4 copy, I was like, man, I, ha I have to pick that up because, again, I, I can get it for cheaper than a PSA 5 or PSA 6 or, heaven forbid, trying to go for a PSA 7 copy. Case in point, this PSA 4, the average price is 30 bucks definitely within my wheelhouse of picking up a vintage baseball card of Brooks Robinson. A PSA 7 in this 71 tops card is $162. So again, if I was focused on that collector grade, I would have had to save up for quite a while to afford this Brooks Robinson. But by going for this PSA 4 copy, I essentially saved $132 which definitely could go for either a big Hall of Famer or multiple additional vintage cards for my collection. So as a summary, these 16 cards in a PSA 4, all 16 cards total $1,718, the average VCP price for a PSA 4. If I were to pay, again, right now, not... I don't know what they were back when I bought these cards, but currently, if I were to spend the money to get a collector grade, so if this was a PSA 7, all those 6s were in PSA 6s, 
I spent that money right now, I would have had to spend $3,454. So basically for these 16 cards, my savings is $1,736. Basically I spent half of what I had to by going the lower grade route, these PSA 4s, than I would have if I had gone for the collector grade copy. Now think to yourself, what could you buy with $1,736 to add to your vintage collection? I'm sure you could pick up quite a good number, if you were looking for quantity, quite a good number of vintage baseball cards, or you could say, hey, that $1,700 could pick up a really nice, high-quality card of a vintage Hall of Famer. Would love to know in the comments where you fall in your vintage baseball card collecting. Are you more focused on quantity or quality? There's no right or wrong answer, whatever your personal preference is, but would love to know in the comments. And if you do focus on quantity, do you have a sweet spot in terms of grade? Do you look to pick up uh, fours or threes or maybe fives or maybe just you find a card that sort of speaks to you and you love the eye appeal no matter what the grade is and, and that's what you pick up. So again, we'd love to know in the comments where you fall in the spectrum and if there is a favorite grade that you have. With that, that's all I have for you. So until next time, thanks for watching.